Welcome to Friday Afternoon Roundup Week 2. Uh, special class field trip today. We came across the street. Uh, the neighbors keep an absolutely gorgeous, well-kept yard. I do not. So some of the fancier plants, um, I think we'll come over here for. But it is Oklahoma, so if somebody runs out of that door with a shotgun, our plan is to scatter rapidly. All right, behind me is Azalea, or the genus Rhododendron, which was one of your plants for this week. Absolutely gorgeous, gets covered with blooms at this time of year. Um, fun fact, it's a, its pollen is toxic, so when bees collect it, the honey is toxic. Uh, it can be turned into mead, an alcoholic drink. Historically, there was one time the Greeks were getting invaded. They made honey intentionally out of a rhododendron, made it into mead, and left it for the invading army. The invading army comes in, they get all whacked out of their gourds on the toxic mead, and they come back in. Fun fact. Uh, another one I forgot to give last week was elm, as I tried to leap high and catch it. Here you can see the fruits, or the samaras, the winged seeds of elms. These are the things that are getting dropped right now and are absolutely everywhere through the fire or through all your planting beds and they're going to come up. The other thing I want to point out, as long as we're over at a beautiful place, is how clean this lawn is. They take very good care of their lawn, they spray it, they put herbicides on it that kill some of the more broadleafed weeds that come in here, they fertilize it, and they keep an absolutely fantastic lawn in terms of it only being grass. That's one approach, where if you want just grass in your lawn, and turf management is a big deal. You can actually go to college and major in turf management and make a good living taking care of people's lawns, taking care of athletic fields, taking care of golf courses. And those are the places that more often than not, people want just grass. But if you look around, you'll also notice there's no biodiversity. There's no insects. There's no birds on here. Um, not passing judgment, they do a fantastic job on turf management. I take the opposite approach of, to me, a mowed weed looks just the same as mowed grass. And I'll show you when we're in our backyard the difference. All right, back in my backyard. I know it's windy, I apologize, but it's Oklahoma. So that's something we're just gonna get used to. Last week, I forgot to do dandelion. And you'll notice as you look around how different my lawn looks than across the street. Uh, once I get this mode, it's gonna look fine. But at this time of year when the pollinators are hungry and monarchs are starting to come back through, I let it grow back up and you'll look around and see pollinators all through here. But here we go, here's our dandelion, beautiful yellow flower that rapidly grows up into a head of uh, fruits, each one with a little parachute. Botanical fact, if you make a wish and blow them all off, that wish comes true. <laughs> yeah. But you have to blow them all off in one blow. <laughs> <laughs> My wish is not coming true, unfortunately. All right, also down here, if you look, we've got another one of your plants, chickweed. Um, very common weed. Uh, in lawns. There's a number of different species. It looks like it's got 10 flowers down there, but it actually only has five flowers, each one with a little notch in it, so each petal kind of looks like it's two petals. That notch is how the family got its name. The family is the pink family, and called pink not because of the color, but because pinking is when you make a little notch in something. So those scissors that make cuts like that, those are called pinking shears because they make little notches. One way to identify this family of plants is the petals are all notched or pinked. So that's your Stellaria media or chickweed. Also growing in here is your freak of the week, hairy bittercress, which is this weed that comes up. Freak of the week because the fruits explode when you touch them. So let me try it on these right here. If I touch them, oh, there goes one. There goes another one. They actually explode. It's called explosive dehiscence. They throw their seeds 
everywhere and that's how they spread. The seeds are also a little bit sticky so they'll get stuck to um, whatever they land to, be that an animal walking through or something else. Alright, we're gonna sneak over here a little bit. Here is another one of your plants, clover, trifolium repens, called trifolium because tri, it's got three folia leaves. Unless it doesn't, keep your eyes open for four leaf clovers. About one in every 5,000 is four leaf clover. Botanical fact if you find one, you get some luck. So go out today, it's a beautiful day. Try to uh, find a four leaf clover and find some luck. It's a member of the pea family, so it actually introduces nitrogen back into the, the soil. Another reason for me to let this grow up at this time of year is I'm pounding that nitrogen into the soil. The other thing that letting diverse plants kind of grow up in your lawn does is these rooting systems are getting down deep. That does a couple things. It pulls up nutrients from down deep and it helps hold moisture in the soil. So a lawn like this is gonna be much better prepared to survive a drought um, or extremes than a monoculture um, well-kept lawn. Um, the other thing that letting a little bit of diversity grow up and let the plants grow a little higher is that's capturing that carbon dioxide the whole time and that's pumping it down to let those roots grow. That's sequestering carbon dioxide from our environment. It's storing it down underground, which is doing a couple things. It's taking it out of the atmosphere, but it's also feeding all the microorganisms uh, down underneath the ground in the soil that are what makes soil healthy um, but those things got to eat carbon, they got to eat sugars somehow, and letting it grow up a little bit feeds that and you end up with a much healthier um, ecosystem in your backyard. And you get tons of pollinators as well. I forgot to talk about stone fruits last week. Here's our stone fruit patch, and stone fruits are anything that's in the genus Prunus. And that's cherries, nectarines, peaches, plums, apricots. Um, all those are very closely related plants. Um, and we have each of those here. Uh, they're so closely related, you can actually graft one onto the other. So you could have a plum with a apricot grafted going off one side and a peach, peach grafted off the other and kind of have a whole cornucopia of fruit on a single tree. So fun stuff there. All right, we are now at the back of the pasture. Beautiful spring wildflower that comes up in my uh, yard is called Golden uh, Groundsel Pacara aria. Um, aria means golden, you can imagine why that has that specific epithet. Um, common weed in yards, but usually people mow before it has a chance to bloom. Uh, this is another reason I love leaving my yard unmowed for the first month or so of the growing season. You get beautiful shows like that. Um, great plant in the sunflower family. Here's another of your plants. Red bud. Oh, I tell you, if good looks were minutes, this tree would be an hour. Absolutely gorgeous. It's your state tree for Oklahoma. Um, beautiful little pink or sometimes white flowers that cover the tree. It's in the pea family, and here's another hint on why that is. There's your legume that it produces. Looks like a little baby pea. Uh, so a great native plant that occurs naturally in the forests, but also a great plant for cultivation in Oklahoma. We have them planted in front of the high school. Um, a great show in the springtime. Great uh, small kind of shade tree. Not, I guess if you sat underneath it, it would give you shade. So it's going to survive the droughts that come, it's going to survive the hard winters because it's evolved to survive in this exact spot. Alright, let's go see another one of your plants. Right. Oh, here's one. This is Buttercup. Come on in, you're going to have to have a close-up. Little tiny yellow flower there called a Buttercup because the flower looks like a little cup of butter. Um, Interesting thing about buttercups is 
they don't have sepals and petals usually, they just have sepals. And those sepals end up being colored, so it ends up being confusing. Am I looking at a sepal or am I looking at a petal? But there's a buttercup. It usually likes the wetter areas of our yard. Uh, let's see if we can find another plant. Here is a, uh, another one of your plants. Wild onion. It is in the genus Allium. And if you break it and smell it, it smells like an onion. I'm okay eating it because I've spent a lot of time looking at plants and learning how to identify them. I would not encourage you, especially at this moment in time, to start experimenting about going out and eating random plants thinking that you can identify them. Um, it's too much of a chance to take right now, but it's a good reason to keep at botany and to keep trying to learn more. Uh, I'm okay eating this because I'm 100% certain about the identification and I'm okay eating it because I'm 100% certain that nothing has been sprayed back here, herbicides or pesticides. If you found this in a park or something like that, you don't know quite what's been sprayed on there and you don't know quite what's going to uh, uh, be on it. Um, I've put links in uh, on Canvas about the wild onion festivals Native Americans uh, have here in Oklahoma, kind of a cool story there. Uh, all right, this plant over here. You want to get the light right? You want to come over? Yeah. On side? Looks for all the world like a wild onion, right? It's got these long leaves just like that. This is called crow poison. Uh, this is not a wild onion, and it's toxic. Uh, it's called fake garlic because sometimes people harvest it and doesn't smell like onion doesn't smell like garlic but it looks like it you could really easily get into a lot of trouble going out trying to harvest spring onions or wild onions and getting this stuff and putting it in the mix and they grow right next to each other here it is with wild onion right there right next to it is your crow poison so be cautious um, it's fun to wildcraft, but now probably isn't the time to be experimenting. All right, a couple more of your plants here. You can see the golden ragwort in the background. Uh, moss. People usually don't think about moss when they're thinking gardens. You can actually make a moss garden. Tons of different species of moss that are out there. They're bryophytes. They aren't flowering plants. They aren't even vascular plants. They don't have xylem or phloem which is why they have to grow in a moist area and they always stay small. Uh, we have a good moss crop this year because we've had a super wet year in Oklahoma. I don't think there's any such thing as an average year in Oklahoma. It's either too wet or too dry. We just had a too wet uh, year and so moss is growing really well in our backyard. Uh, if you have a seat, some place where water kind of seeps out in your yard, it might be fun to try to grow a moss garden. Super cool looking. Here you can see another one of your plants called uh, sorry, called plantain or plantago. Um, very common weed. We have at least four species growing in our pasture back here. Uh, even though it's really closely related to snapdragons, you can see that the flowers aren't very impressive. That's a full inflorescence in flower right now but it's wind pollinated. So just like grasses or just like oaks, the tassels that we saw last week, they've got no reason to make a pretty flower because all they're trying to do is make their pollen be exposed to the wind. And once that pollen is exposed to the wind, then pollination can happen. So they'll spread their pollen everywhere. So that does it for your second Friday wrap up. Uh, I was also gonna put hyacinth in, but across the street, it's already done. That's why I started doing this uh, a couple weeks ago is one thing you start to appreciate once you start becoming more aware of the natural world around you is how fast everything happens. Things bloom and a week later you don't see them again for a year. So start to recognize how quickly it happens. So I'm saying goodbye to you from my back pasture which weather permitting is going to look a lot different. So 
I'm about to put that first mow in, and this is going to look a lot more like a lawn next week than this really biodiverse, pollinator-rich area. I've got my buttercup, I've got my spring beauty, I've got my wild onion, I've got the hen bit, I've got the chickweed, <laughs> chickweed. I've got the freak of the week, hairy bitter cress, popping its seeds out. Uh, what other of the plants that you're required to know are in here? There's your pollinators, there's a honeybee buzzing around. Uh, really biodiverse little patch. Um, and it's just an area that I chose to stop mowing for a while. Enjoy your weekend, miss you guys, and be safe.